Welcome back to the channel, my freedom, love, and two-way supporting patriots. So unless you guys have been living under a rock the last 24 hours roughly, pistol braces are once again huge news in the uh, two-way community. So what started it all this time was an article written by John Crump, who is excellent uh, supporter of the two-way, does a lot in the two-way community. And he wrote an uh, article on Ammo Land, basically showing the back and forth between SB Tactical and the ATF. Now I'm going to leave a link for that article down in the description box. You guys, if you haven't read it, uh, go ahead and read it. It takes uh, five minutes to read it. It's a really good read and uh, really important, especially if you have uh, pistol braces. So basically, it's kind of like what happened with Q and the Honey Badger. Well where the ATF told them they couldn't make those anymore, they were illegal. They haven't done that per se with SB Tactical, but what they're saying is, hey, you guys have a whole bunch of braces that you're selling and marketing as being approved by the ATF when we haven't done so. So back in 2018, the ATF wrote SB Tactical a letter saying that two braces that they had... Uh, released and were selling were approved by the uh, ATF and had letters of approval. And that's going to be the braces uh, SB15 and the MPX PSB. So this letter was back in July 2018. Underneath those two approved braces is a whole list of braces that aren't approved and haven't received letters from the ATF. Included in those braces would be the SBA3, uh, the SB PDW. And then a whole list of 20 plus other braces. So like I said, this article was written in 2018. Uh, since then, uh, the SBA4, which is an extremely popular brace as well, has been released. So it's not on that list, but you can go ahead and just write it in yourself. I'm sure it would be. So SB Tactical is, you know, coming out and saying like, hey, we've been trying to work with you guys on getting stuff, you know, approved. And, let, and trying to get guidelines for what constitutes as a brace versus a shouldering device. And so the ATF, you know, just drags their feet or just completely refuses to help out the industry and these manufacturers and giving them guidelines as to what constitutes, you know, the difference between a brace and a uh, shouldering device. So it's, I just don't understand, you know, it's the government, so I mean, you know, not understanding is pretty typical, if you want to be honest. But what, why can't they just come out and say this is what constitutes, you know, is legal brace? This doesn't. Make it easier for all the manufacturers. Make it easier for all gun owners across the country. Uh, as you guys know, SB Brace, uh, or SB Tactical, excuse me, has sold a ton of braces and have, you know, tons of uh, options for different firearms. Uh, my SB PDW, I run it with uh, three different uppers um, over the two calibers, you know, so I use it quite a bit. And so whether right now this is legal or illegal, no one still knows. It, it's a joke, you know, it's, it's, I foresee it going kind of like the bump stocks where it's legal one day and then flip a switch and it's going to be illegal the next day and then you've just made millions of gun owners uh, felons just like that. You know, there's way more pistol braces out there than there were bump stocks. And uh, when bump stocks were getting banned, people were making a big deal about it, you know. Um, and then a lot of people were like, who gives a crap? You know, it's a, it's a bump stock. Like, I never used a bump stock. I never owned one. I could care less about them personally. But I was still in the fight against having them banned because it always leads to something else getting banned further down the road. Oh, well, we got rid of this one item, we can get rid of this, we can get rid of this, we can get rid of this, so on and so forth. Uh, you guys all know how it goes. We all have to be fighting on every single gun law restriction that's coming down the road. We have to fight against it as a group and as a community. So as of right now, who knows what's going to happen with the braces, whether they're legal, illegal. Um, I eventually see them being illegal, is my guess which is beyond annoying because then you got to go through the NFA and do the $200 tax stamp and have them registered and then they'd be considered your short, bar short barreled rifles, of course. Um, I'm quite opposed to that as I travel state lines quite a bit between Colorado and Kansas. And so the pistol brace was the option I went with because, you know, as a pistol, 
you don't have to ask for permission across state lines and you shouldn't have to ask permission for anything in the first place. So from everything I'm seeing, it seems like the ATF and uh, plans going forward, they're really going to be going after pistol braces and 80% uh, receivers and lowers. So, you know, that seems to be the ongoing battle and uh, the battle that is going to grow here to come soon. So if you guys have any questions or anything, let me know. Uh, definitely check out John Crump's article down below in the description box, like I said. So that's all I got, you guys. I appreciate you as always. Um, I finally joined up on Parlor. I am still trying to figure out how to use that. So I'll leave a link for that down in the description as box as well. And uh, bear with me as I try and figure out that platform as I suck at the social media stuff other than YouTube. So I wish each and every one of you a happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for watching as always, you guys. God bless.